In The Sims 3, your Sims have already had the opportunity to go adventuring around the world, reach for their ambitions, party late into the night, and enjoy each generation to its fullest. But even with all this stuff vying for your attention, there is still something missing. Wait, what's this? Felis Catus? Canis Lupus? Equus Ferris? Hominem Revelio? Wait, what? Yes, you can now enjoy and take ownership of your favorite creatures, abolitionists be darned, with The Sims 3 Pets Expansion Pack. This is the fifth expansion pack requiring The Sims 3 to play, and unlike many prior to this, there are multiple versions to choose from. You've got the regular Pets expansion to The Sims 3 for Windows and Macintosh computers, another computer version called Sims 3 Plus Pets, which has the base game and the expansion together, a standalone console version for the Xbox 360 and PS3, and a standalone portable game for the Nintendo 3DS. There are also limited editions of the game that give you extra content, including 10 special pet breeds for the 360 and PS3 game, and a pet shop lot with exclusive items on the Windows and Mac expansion. Just pick whichever one gets you off the quickest, but I went with the limited edition Windows and Mac version, which is what I'll be covering in this review. Keep in mind that due to the fact that EA likes making things as confusing as possible, the console versions are completely different games with completely different crap. So not everything I mentioned in this review applies to the console game. Once you start the game, you're greeted with the most amazing loading screen I've seen in The Sims 3 thus far. And by amazing, I mean more bland than a pile of dried oatmeal in a dry desert with Keanu Reeves spouting dry humor. Actually, that's pretty exciting in comparison, and this loading screen is just sad. But soon I realized I'm even more sad for complaining about a loading screen, and the main menu appears in order to pity me. If you've played the game before, you can select any old save game you want, but with pets you get a new town to play with that's simply overrun with animals of all shapes and sizes. This is Appaloosa Plains, a quiet countryside town with meadows and woods to explore. At least according to the laziest wiki quoting I can possibly pull off without you noticing. Whoops, gave away my secret. So yeah, Appaloosa Plains, less of this, more of this. It's filled with ranches and cowboy hats, and seems to be stuck in a perpetual autumn-like season. While you can enjoy the pet's expansion with any other town, keep in mind that this one is heavily geared towards animal amusement and has lots more fauna roaming around than places like Bridgeport. Wherever you choose to live, the quickest way to pet ownership is to enter the revamped create a family mode and create your own family of creatures. There are three pets to choose from, the old standbys, cats and dogs, and a newcomer to the series, horses. Each of these virtual animals can be designed and customized in a manner very similar to how you design and customize virtual people. That is, you can go as hands-on or as deeply involved as you like. Want to make a Clifford the Dog knockoff? Go ahead. Want a lime green skeleton cat? Be my guest. Fancy creating your own little pony? Have fun with that. And yes, there are even unnatural designs to choose from, which is kind of like applying vinyl to your pet. Perhaps a bit cruel in some people's eyes, but you know what? This is The Sims, where everything is ridiculous. That's just how it goes. Of course, there are also a crap ton of breeds snatched from real life to choose from. 46 cat breeds, 72 big dog breeds, 46 small dog breeds, and 30 horse breeds. 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 Check the video description for a complete listing of them if you're curious. If your favorite is not included, you can likely create it by using the extreme amount of customization available in the advanced editors. You can also customize your pet's traits now, which give them individual personalities and flaws. You can even alter their voice to set them even further apart from the animal crowd. It's weird though, the barks, meows, and neighs all sound less like an animal and more like a voice actor impersonating an animal. <coughs> Turns out that's how the sounds were made this time around, by mixing real animals and human noise. It's really freaking weird, and I really can't understand why the designers would want to do this, because you hear these sounds all the time and it never stops being awkward, at least to my ears. Once you've finished building your pet with a human voice, you can place your pet on any lot with human sims. From here, it's up to you as to what you want to do, and at first it can be a bit overwhelming. A large reason for this is that unlike previous pets expansions, you now have complete control over your pets, just like with any other sim. 
There are a massive amount of things that each of the three main pets can do, and several things exclusive to each animal type. So let's just start with what you can do with any of them. Pets are pets, obviously. They're there to be there, to pee all over the place, to make noise, to tear apart your house, and to generally act like a socially inappropriate citizen. But they're also there to socialize with and be your sim's friend when all your human friends have ran off woohooing everyone in the neighborhood or whatever. It's your sim's job to take care of their animal friends. First by providing basics like shelter, a bed, food, water, and playthings. Pets also get dirty and get fleas, so you'll need to make sure to bathe them every so often or just get them a futuristic automated pet bathing Dr. Seuss contraption. But it's equally important that you interact with them because pets tend to get lonely rather fast. They have needs, wishes, and feelings just like any other sim, and it's important to keep these fulfilled if you want them to behave themselves. Otherwise, just like neglecting a child, you risk having them carted off by a social worker, or they might even die. That crap's just sad, and it bums everyone out in the household, including other pets, so don't do it. Pets can also have relationships with other pets, including having their own friends and enemies. They can also have romantic relationships, and yes, that means pet woohoo. It's not nearly as absurd as it is with The Sims, it's mainly there to act as a build-up to the breeding system. Pets of the same species can get it on with each other, and you can take advantage of their genetics to make new breeds. This is also how you'll get kittens, puppies, and foals, since you can't create them yourself. Not only do you have your pets popping out new ones here and there, you'll run across wild animals and strays. You can choose to befriend these and even take them into your home, but keep in mind you can only have 10 sims total. Up to 8 human sims, or 6 pets, where you mix and match to total 10. Eventually, you'll have a freaking zoo on your hands, so you can wait for some of your animals to pass on, or you also have the option to do things like sell them, put them up for adoption, or just let them loose into the wild blue yonder. Or if you have the PC Limited Edition, you also have the pet store to help deal with your animal needs. This is a lot that you can place anywhere and acts like any other walk-in lot. You can buy and sell pet-related goods and do pet adoptions here as well. And while we're talking about community lots, let's talk about community lots some more. There are a few new lot types that come with pets. These pertain to specific animal types and are essentially parks tailored to their specific vices. For instance, you've got the cat jungle, which consists of a park filled with cat things so they can scratch and sleep their nine lives away. There's also a dog park with open space to play fetch and a bone-shaped pool that I'm sure pleased some designer to create, but I can promise a dog does not care what shape it is. And finally, you'll have a place for horses to run around and practice jumping and racing, which is fun for both the horse and the owner. Across the street, you also have the new equestrian center. This is kind of like a stadium for horses, and it brings us to the main focus of horses, which is to be an awesome horse. This is accomplished by making them do horsey activities, like learning to run faster, jump higher, and race racier. While horses can do a lot of this stuff on their own, the competitions will require a sim to ride them. So it's a good idea to have your sim with the horse in order to focus on their skills along with the horses. If you're not into racing or jump courses, you can just let them do their thing on their own. As long as they have space, lots of water, lots of hay, and maybe a tasty salt lick, horses can pretty much take care of themselves. They also have a need to exercise, so as long as they can do this along with everything else, they'll be fine. You can also ride your horse in place of a car, and as small as the towns are in The Sims 3, it's not really a big deal, and is sure to make your neo-ludite sim proud. Another thing you may run across in the wild is a wild horse with a freaking narwhal horn sticking out of its head. Apparently, these are called unicorns and are the special creature in The Sims 3 Pets. These tend to come out late at night, seem to be searching for a place called Candy Mountain, and can be found by zooming out and spotting these anomalous glowing clouds that look like an army of Care Bears farted. If you can befriend one of these things, then it's yours, and you can treat it mostly like a horse. A horse with demon powers, since it may just set the world on fire when you aren't looking. It also has the ability to bless Sims, that is, if it's not feeling like freaking Satan at the time. Of course, they tend to phase out of existence at 5 a.m., so you'll have to act quickly if you want to capture one of these rare majestic sadists. Next up, you've got dogs, and their main lot in life is to be man's best friend. Quite often, they'll follow you closer than your own shadow, and they're almost always ready to play. 
When they're not licking your face off, you can find them doing you a favor by digging up your well-manicured lawn. Sometimes they'll find something they think is incredibly cool, like a maple leaf or an empty potato chip bag, but most of the time they'll just leave a hole. However, you can train them to put their nose to actual use by helping them raise their hunting skill. With this, they'll roam the lands searching for rare collectibles and objects, collect them, and bring them back to you to do whatever it is you pack rats do with such junk. They also make good guard dogs, mainly due to the fact that they are, in fact, dogs. Just choose an item you want them to guard and they'll guard it, but do keep an eye on them since they have a destruction need to fulfill. Give them something to chew on that's not important, otherwise that 3000 simoleon sofa might just get downgraded to a love seat once they're through. Lastly, you've got cats. Cats are here to exist. Really, they're just there. That's what cats do. When they want something, they'll let you know, but otherwise they're probably sleeping or eyeing you in such a way that makes you a bit nervous because it looks like they're planning out how to murder you inside that little brain of theirs. Nah, seriously, cats are cool because they're weird. They like their silly little toys like yarn, wall things, and fake mice. Especially catnip-filled mice. Nothing like having a stoned cat roaming around the house scratching everything. And yes, they also have a scratching need to fulfill, so make sure they have a scratching post so they don't use your leg instead but their main ability is that they can hunt other animals. Once they learn this ability, they can go out on the town and sneak up on whatever prey they think they can take down. If they happen to come out of it the victor, the creature will be added to the cat's inventory and they will probably bring it back home to their owner. This is also a very efficient way to come into possession of many of the minor pets in the game. Yes, cats, dogs, and horses are the main pets you can customize and control, but there are a ton of other critters that can be caught and contained. These are treated just like collectibles, so some of them are more uncommon or more valuable than others. These can either be sold or dropped into their related cage or terrarium to be kept as extra pets that don't count against your household limit. You've got lizards like geckos, iguanas, and chameleons. Rodents like rats, chinchillas, and hedgehogs. Snakes like boas, kings, and pythons. Turtles like turtles, turtles, and turtles and birds in both small and large varieties like finches, parakeets, macaws, and even falcons. You also have fish, but you've always had fish and they're still frickin' boring. Each one of these have to be fed, played with, and cleaned just like any other pet and you can even carry them around with you. Oddly enough, it seems that like cars, these animals can just be stuck in your pocket, they fit just fine. Although sometimes they'll escape from your pocket, and in that case you'll want to find them before a dog does and sees it as a tasty meal. Also, birds and cats don't mix, go figure that one out. There are a couple other creatures that you'll run across around town, but these are totally useless. First, you've got deer, which bound around like a ballerina on crack and do absolutely nothing. You can't hunt them for venison or their antlers, and I, I didn't expect you to be able to, but really what use are deer otherwise? Sure, you can pet them and watch them prance around like ninnies, but that's it. Also, raccoons. Sure, like deer, it's cool that they're around, I guess, but again, they just show up and stand there. Except raccoons also knock over your trash can and rip open your garbage bags and throw crap everywhere, so they are not only useless, but they just plain suck. Beyond these pointless varmints, there are a few other additions to the game. First is the new Woohoo location for humanoid sims, and that is the haystack. Jump right in and get some. However, I have one small issue with this. Have you ever jumped into a bale of hay, much less got your freak on in one? That crap hurts. Each piece of hay is like a freaking razor blade with a sharp point if it's in the right shape and you bump into it the wrong way. I ain't getting my junk nowhere near that junk, I'm sorry. You've also got a new addition to any town and that is the ice cream truck. You can find it by looking for its icon on the map and then track it down to sample some of its tasty frozen treats. But this thing, I don't know, something just feels off. For one thing, there's no sim inside of it, yet it continues to drive around and spurt its cream all over the place. Then without fail, it will park itself right outside of your front door like a pet -a bear van or something. Then it's off to its next victim, dingly little tune blaring throughout the land. Ugh. So is the pet's expansion for The Sims 3 worth buying. 
As always, the suggested retail price is $40, so the choice really comes down to what you're looking for. It comes with a ridiculous amount of new content and variations on old content, and there's a whole list of little things I didn't even touch on like new music, new clothing, and pet-related traits for your sims. But the vast majority of the content is about the pets themselves, and that is its strength and its downfall. Personally, I've just never enjoyed the Pets expansions that much because that's not why I play The Sims. Now, I like pets in real life. I have pets in real life. They're awesome and furry and all that. But I play The Sims 3 in order to do things like build houses, collect junk, and live out various generations over time through confusing and manipulative relationships. When you add pets into the mix, it only distracts from the core Sims gameplay in my opinion. Still, I enjoyed this pets expansion and I think it's fantastically well done, but after this review, I doubt that I'll use its content very much. And I was excited about the minor pets, but well, they're so minor that they're barely worth having at all. However, I know a crap ton of you are going to eat these pixelized animals up, so don't let my playstyle stop you. If you want sim pets in your game, then grab this expansion, because it will not disappoint.